Hey guys, it's Becca. I am finally back. I'm not sure how permanent this return is going to be. I have got a lot of things that I want to catch up with. I just have been missing you guys too much, so here I am. I'm going to be doing kind of a massive project pan update right now because I have had a lot of project pan updates that I've missed because I have not been updating videos. I've been on kind of a hiatus and then of course <clears throat> you can probably hear it in my voice. The um, the pandemic finally hit our house and we've all been out for the last couple of weeks. So I'm even further behind than I meant to be, but I do have a little box right here full of items that I had in Project Pans that I have hit my goals on, and I just want to get it all out of the way and probably start fresh. I'm probably going to have fewer Project Pans that I'm working on. I have a couple of changes that I'm excited about sharing with you, but let's just go ahead and get on started. First, I want to talk about some eyeshadow palettes. Those are always exciting and always beautiful. So I do have these two eyeshadow palettes here that I was working on in my Pan That Summer palette or Pan My Seasonal palette. I had my Focus palette and then I had my Companion palette that I was working on. And I just want to kind of check back in with you guys and say I was loving these shades. I was absolutely just having so much fun with this one especially I was very surprised. Like I knew I would like the colors. Here's what it looks like now. It was for reference absolutely brand spanking new. I'd gotten it in a BoxyCharm and never used it. So I have little dips. I've used every shade. I have used it probably a good, I don't know, 70 or 80 times. Of course, the way I do count my uses is each shade that I use. So if I use four shades in a look, that's four uses. But you can still see all those little check marks there that is all the use I had on this palette so I have really enjoyed it kind of a little bit sad to put it away I think I may end up still keeping it out because these shades here are beautiful for fall and I'm sure that these browns down here as well like even though it's a beautiful summer palette even called sun-kissed summer the shades will probably work really well with fall though I am putting it away I think for now because I have the new iteration of my seasonal palette project that I'm working on. It's a little bit different, but I'm very excited to share it with you. It's probably going to be in the next couple of days. Hopefully, if I can keep my energy up. <coughs> I'm going to try not to cough too much on you guys. All right. Then we have, of course, this palette here. This is the Urban Decay Naked Honey. That was the Focus palette also getting rolled out of the project. I did use this one a good number of times. I will just kind of share all those check marks there, the green ones are all the check are the uses since the last time I've updated on this. So here you can see it looks like it's been used. Urban Decay shadows are really hard to make any difference on. I don't know if you can tell, but this shade does have a good bit of a dip in it. It's really light, so it's kind of reflecting, but there is no pan in here and there's no pan close. Like maybe this one, if I continued to use this one pretty consistently for inner corner and brow bone, I'd get there in another month or so, but I'm rolling this out for now. I have enjoyed these golds, I have enjoyed these yellows, these summery tones, much more than I thought I was going to. So I would love to remember that and not neglect them because in the past I have been very, I guess, intimidated by gold tones and yellow tones just because they are so bright and they are very, they don't, you don't miss them. They're not shy. So I guess in the past I've just kind of been shy about using them, but they really, I love them so much. I really do. All right, we're gonna talk about some more eyeshadows. So the next project I wanna update you guys on is my Pan Those Eyeshadows. Three updates for you. One, the Carity Rose All Day. I have decided to declutter, I don't have it. it. The formula has gone bad or something, like it's really hard to get any shadows to work. It's crumbly, it is not what I remember at all, so that one has been rolled out of the project. This one here, this, can you remember when I rolled this into the project? Probably in like March. Like what is it still doing here in September? I don't even know. But I don't even know if I used it at all. Like this is definitely spring, not even summer shades. I didn't use it at all. I decided to roll this out of the project because I wasn't getting use on it and I'd like to roll something else in. But I'm not decluttering it because I do think they are beautiful shades and they work fine. But then I have this one. This one I rolled in the previous month it was brand new so I don't really have anything to show you as far as the picture just imagine a brand new unused palette I had two shades that were rolled in here and my rules for the pan that palette or pan those eyeshadows was that I want to have hit pan in both of the shades that are selected or I use one gram of the eyeshadow palette itself or I use it a hundred times of course counting those uses being 
one use of a shade is one use. So I think I've hit probably all three of those goals. I loved this one so, so much. All right, you guys, I don't, I haven't really hit any pans in my pan, those eyeshadows yet this year, but check it out. I have four pans in this palette and this was brand new when I brought it into the project. Yes, I know that the Bad Habit formula is softer, but that is still, I think, a pretty much a really awesome accomplishment there. I These are the two that were in the project. I used them probably about 20 or so uses each before I hit pan. Probably about the same number of uses on these. I loved this corner over here. I was wearing pretty much like a peachy brown mm, juicy look every single day for a while just because I couldn't get enough of it. It was so gorgeous. I did use all the other shades at least once, so I did use it No Pan Left Behind as well because that has been another goal that I've been working on. But check it out, guys. I finally, finally did it. I think I kind of made up for like not hitting pan and things previously because I've got four pans in this little palette now and I'm so proud of that. So the next project I'd like to talk about, I don't know that I'm doing this in any particular order or any order that makes sense, but we're talking about the Deck of Panning Project pan next. That one is the one that was created by Emily from Emily and, Ma and Max based on the book to be read list, I think, kind of game. So anyway, I had been working on some items from that one. I had finally, finally, finally used this halfway. I wanted to give down to this little guy here. Wow, all of the like, can you see that? It looks so gross. Like it's just kind of chunks of glitter in there. But I finally did use this halfway and it took me most of the year. That was a balancing act kind of project. I did have a long-term or was it, no, the Joker. The Joker, I was working on this. You guys, I have finished it. This is empty. I don't know how I managed to do it. I just, it is gone. I'm so, so excited. Of course, I have like two or three more. Like, yay, of course. Why would I do that to myself? I have more of these. But I was very pleased to have finally finished this. I don't even know if I've ever seen anybody pan one of these before. I'm sure they have. I just don't watch all the videos ever. But kudos to them if they were able to do it because this was massive. All right, another thing that I was pretty excited about is I did finish, this was I think a long-term project or a long-term product, I finished a liquid lipstick here. I know it doesn't look like it, it stopped settling at some point, but now it is dry, I took the stopper out, happy to have it done. And then another one, which is just an update, not a finished product, but this here, I have decanted the last little dredges of the L'Oreal foundation that I have been working on into here. So there's probably only a couple of grams left in here. And I have actually found as thick and sticky as initially this was and how much I didn't like it then, I actually really like it now. <clears throat> I don't know, I guess I figured out a way to mix it with my other products, a way to blend it, that I really do like the coverage of it. And I have found that I've been able to make it look, at least not, I don't think it looks cakey. I really do enjoy this one. I have a second one of these because when I bought it way back when, I bought two at the same time because it was cheaper that way. <sighs> have I learned my lesson? Probably not, but I am glad to have it now because I'm going to use it. For the Advent Calendar Project pan, I do have two empties and they're both eyeliners, so I'm pretty excited about that. First is the Lee Swatier eyeliner in the shade Acaju, I think it is. It's a really beautiful kind of plummy, eggplanty purple. I loved it. I used it mostly like in my waterline, but sometimes I used it as my eyeliner, but it took months and months, but we're down to, I can't really sharpen it anymore. The other one was the glitter eyeliner from, I don't even know, it was kind of a mystery, but see how teeny tiny it is now. I am done with it. I, I am too nervous to kind of try to maneuver it near my eyes. So two more eyeliners out. It's pretty exciting. Next, we're going to be doing the partners in cream update. And I do have two Updates. One is an empty. I have finally finished this. Very excited about it. It is the Ulta Beauty Tinted Eye Primer in the shade Peach Glow. I have found that my Urban Decay Primer Potion does not do the job for me by itself anymore, I guess. So I have been mixing it with these Ulta primers. This one has a tint to it. The current one is the nude one that I've been using and it just makes it stay much better. So I was using it for that and it is gone now. Took a long time. Very excited, but Eye primers take a long time to get out of my collection anyway, so I was very pleased. The other one that I want to update on, it, I tilted it so it doesn't look as impressive as it did, but this is the Iconic London Highlighter that I've been working on since the beginning of the year. I've been mixing it in with my foundation. At this point, it is down so low that I cannot pull any more up into the dropper, so I am going to be decanting it into a different container, and I can see the end is in sight, I think, on this one, so that's pretty exciting as well. Oh, and I forgot there is one more thing that I finished, and it is finally this guy, the Canadian Hemp Seed Clay Mask for oil absorbing. I think I used it. Let's just see. I can pull it up. 
four more times, well, five more times. So there was a total of 11 uses left in this whenever I started it in the project. I think it was like up to here, but we're done. Very, very happy. Almost done here. So I do have a couple of empties from my Pan That Face Palette project pan. So I wanted to share, I have been working on the blush in this palette and I did finish the blush here. So that's pretty exciting. I am planning on at some point, maybe incorporating these two shades into the palette itself, my Pan That Face Palette, so that I can have an empty face palette at some point would be so exciting. And then I did have this highlighter this loose highlighter that I had pressed into the palette itself and that is also done. The palette is looking really good but I do want to give that one a showcase of its own project so that I can just really kind of see look how pretty because I did repress new things in there and I'm loving some of the shades and I want to talk about it but I do want to keep this video from becoming like monstrously long. Two projects left I think so I've got my shop my stash I think it is so I had been using this doll 10 here I don't know why I put it in here but I guess I wanted to show off like look I made a big dip in it I'm so proud of myself because I'm not really that good at using cream blushes these smell good and I really like them so I did use some good use on this one and then this one I wanted to make sure that I gave myself credit that I did use it I think it was at least five or six or seven times this is a BH Cosmetics blush probably one of the oldest in my collection can't even tell that I used it but it is beautiful and I might bring it back out because it is a very like autumny to winter kind of color and finally my team project pan I have four empties here I did finish the AOA Studio Pro Wear Foundation. I had decanted it into this little thing for the last little bit. I guess that's why I have this in here. Isn't that a cute little tub? Like I love these tiny tubs to decant things into, but I did finish that one eventually. I finished the Wet n Wild Serum found Foundation. What is this? Serum Rose Primer Serum. This one is gone as well. I guess this is where we were at last time and now it is all gone. Finished this Ulta Juice Infused Lip Oil. This one is I think it was one from a gift with purchase because it doesn't have the shade name on it, but I think it would be called probably like Ro Tea Rose or something I think was the name for this one. And another eyeliner. This is actually two eyeliners. So that's four eyeliners I have finished since the last time we talked, which is exciting because I have way, way too many eyeliners in my collection. But this is one of those Ulta double-ended ones. We had a brown and a black. I finished the brown way before I finished the black. In fact, I sharpened it all the way into the black section. So this is really just looks like a double-ended black eyeliner because I used all the brown. But very, very excited to have those done. And that is a lot of empties and a lot of updates to try to catch up with all at once. So as far as going forward, I am going to try to keep up with videos a little bit more regularly. I am struggling with the schedule right now because both me and my husband are nurses. We do work those long shifts. He works at a different facility than I do that's farther away. Um, with So there's a, nice, a big long drive that he has. And it impacts my schedule in that, especially like if he is working night shifts, he comes back and he sleeps during the day when I would ordinarily be filming when the kids are at school. So those days that he has night shifts, he's I don't really film because I'm trying to let him rest. And then of course the kids in school, finally in school back again, so I'm very pleased about that. Also have where I've been working on a second job where I work on one or two days during the week. So it's just been, I've been working on it. I think the biggest thing though that threw a wrench in my plans that I did not foresee at all was that a couple of weeks ago, my husband and my daughter came home sniffling and coughing and fevering and of course they were both positive. Finally, the pandemic has hit our house. I was taking care of them and of course three to four days later now I am coughing, sniffing, sneezling, sneezling, <laughs> sneezing and I am now positive for it too. This is several days ago now. I'm recovered for the most part. I still sound gunky, still feel kind of fatigued but I think I'm getting back there and having that extra gap, that extra two weeks or so that I was like, ugh, I can't even film, made me realize that yes, I do miss it and I do want to come back, but I don't know what capacity I'll be able to just with I'm still figuring out schedules right now. So hopefully that all made sense. So I anyway, I have missed you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming back, especially after me being gone for so long with not really much of an explanation. I appreciate you for coming back to me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are staying healthy and safe and in good spirits, and I hope I see you guys in the next one.